you're always on the camera. If you're gonna sit there, you know better. It's always pointed at him for worship. I'm walking out at that point. The thing of it is, you guys over there are very photogenic. So we, it's a win win for us. You're very kind, but I think I need to push you. He's aligned. He's aligned. I'm just like, this is. Start, Kevin. I think the cuckoo is cuckoo? not working. It's 701. Uh, doing... hmm? You want to do communion? Are we doing communion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sing a song, then we'll oh, okay. do communion. Does that sound okay? Yeah. I didn't know when we... When we... I didn't, yeah. <clears throat> no, either way is good. It's off. <clears throat> it's off. Do you want to turn it off? Sorry. Cuckoos are always off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus shared communion, a cup of bread with his disciples. He said, I passionately desired to share this meal with you. He knew what was about to transpire, and the disciples didn't. And I imagine, I, I'm just guessing, Jesus was just bursting, wanting to tell them. That this new covenant was about to begin. Thank you, Lord. That the old covenant was about to be fulfilled. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. That a couple thousand years of law was about mm. to be fulfilled. Mm. sons of God with their fathers. Through the blood and through the body of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So he took the, the bread and he broke it. And I believe that he broke it because it was his plan that his body be broken. So he was fulfilling his plan by breaking the bread before his body was broken. And he blessed it. And he broke it and he handed it out and said, this is my body which is broken. Take it and eat. And earlier he had said that unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part in it. Yes. And I believe that he was saying, you need to take me for who I am and everything I represent, everything I am. Can't say I like this part, but not that part. So we take this bread tonight, Jesus, because we believe in you for who you are, for who you said you are, for who you said you're going to be and what you're going to do.
And in the same manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. He said, my blood is shed for you. The remission of sins. This is the shedding of the lamb in the days of old. Signified the sacrifice that was made for sin. Jesus' blood was shed. Take and drink this, and as often as you do, do it remember me. It's remembrance of me. So, Lord, we take this cup yes, and remember. Thank you, Lord. What you did for us. Then, in the fulfillment of the law, you took our sin and you shed your blood. to the cross. You paid the debt that we could not pay. You made a way where there wasn't. Lord God, and a longing in your heart for us to be together. So Lord, as we, as we sing, as we worship you, Lord God, manifest your presence here, Lord. You said you would be with us. That you would be where two or three of us are gathered together, Lord.
Glory to you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord for Bible studies. You know, it is um, so good, um, a Bible study like this. This is the way we all started back in the old hippie days. You know, it was just a guitar and um, a couple of songs and somebody reading the word. And sometimes it lasts an hour, sometimes it lasts all night. But um, it's so important, everybody's busy, to just take time out and get your mind stayed on Him. Thank you. Know, and I, I, and it's, for the most part, I know it's, we call it an hour and it takes time to get here and it takes time to get home and all of that. But all of these kinds of things is part of communing with the Lord. We had communion to commune with him. And when it says, uh, this do in remembrance of me, to take that moment and just remember the goodness of God and to say, look what the Lord has done for me. You know? And then uh, uh, I, to me, it's, it's very important that we, uh, we always honor the Lord, make sure that he knows. It's just like, I think I've said before, you know, if, you love somebody make sure that you tell them that you love them mm -hmm. don't wait till it's too late to tell them uh, so you know we, we love the Lord tell them you know, it's, it's important well we have a uh, special speaker starting off today uh, Kathy's got the word of the Lord for us and uh, she's going to deliver it to us right now and we're going to take notes and say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Can I change my mind and give her that one? Mm -hmm. She has a smaller She's going to. And um, I have a, yeah, I have, um, she's she's a I think I have one for everybody here. I'm 825. I have a smaller shirt. So the verse who I chose for this week is one that has a lot of special meaning for me. Um, Clip it to you. Particularly the last 10 years or so. Clip it to your shirt. Here. Clip it to your shirt. It has a clippy on it. Oh, I see. That way you can, you can clip it anywhere. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stick. Here, I'm going to get John too. There's plenty. Adam? Twenty pints. And you've got your own coffee. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the rest of the table. These are always part of the technical difficulties. This is a way of showing you. Okay. This is not working. Bummer. Is that the same one he uses? Yep. Yeah. How do you make it work? How do you make it? She just picks it on the edge. And just just bangles it. He doesn't have an edge. No, no, it, it works. Here you go, Michelle. 
Is that gonna work? Don't move. You can at least no. try it on my paper. <laughs> okay. Is that gonna work? We'll find out. So the verse I've selected, um, there's this Matthew 37 to 40. Um, and there's a little bit of verses before that, but Matthew 25. The righteous will answer him, Lord, when did you when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. This, this particular passage has a lot of meaning for me, um, particularly in the last 10 years. Um, when I was growing up, we weren't, um, I, my mom was a single parent, and we didn't have a lot of extra money, so we had to be very creative with our, our finances. And generosity is one of the things that we're really called to do, uh, but it doesn't have to necessarily be a money form. It can be your time. It can be listening to somebody. It can be um, just going out of your way to smile at somebody, say something kind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I just put some extra things down here that um, were just thoughts in mind. There's a book I was reading called Rediscovering Jesus, that some of you have that book. And it talks about that there is an obligation to the poor. It's impossible to separate the spiritual teachings of Jesus from his social teachings just as it's impossible to separate our love from God from our love of neighbor. Mm. And I've always found it's, and many times when it's easy to write a check and send it off, that's the easy part, but to, which is, it's part of being generous, but also if you spend time, you know, non-money ways to give to people. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's I've been involved in for a long time is sponsoring children in the third world. And particularly during the last year or so with the pandemic and a lot of these countries in Central America, South America, and Africa, the, um, their economies, I mean, our economies have taken a hit, but it's nothing like what those countries do. Basically, people are, their jobs are shut down and they don't have a social safety net like unemployment or PPP loans and things like that. And so if they don't have work, they don't eat. Mm -hmm. And so what's happened is the program, the Compassion Program or World Vision or Save the Children, there are mm -hmm. many organizations like that, they um, use the donations to bring people food to eat, um, medicine they can. Mm -hmm. um, some of the countries like Colombia, Peru are just in terrible shape. And so you might want to include those countries and your and those people in your prayers. Mm -hmm. um, it's just most of you have traveled, and especially if you travel to third world countries, mm -hmm. especially like you guys have gone to India, and um, we think what seems what we think of as poverty here in the United States is rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So, so I just I just want I don't want. I have to read all these thoughts here, but it was a saying of my dad. Um, I'm sure he didn't make it up, but he said, when all is said and done, more is said than done. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. More is said than done. More is said than done. Good. Yeah. So I would just, um, so generosity isn't what's in your bank account. It can be, but it's more than that. It's also what's in your heart, mm -hmm. what you want to give mm -hmm. to people. So I would just say that I encourage you all to be generous every day. Mm -hmm. And um, there's another thing out of the Rediscovering Jesus book that says to the parent, Jesus is really a, a radical type of teacher in his time. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that he was crucified and, and rejected was because he was upsetting <coughs> everyone's apple cart. That's right. He came and he, mm -hmm. he, he was very radical. And I guess generosity and forgiveness were the two things that were just not something that you did in that time 
because it was a very hard time, except for the very wealthy. And it was hard for people to be generous or forgive because it was such a tough, difficult mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. time of, you know, history. So, um, but it's something that we can do every day for, for somebody. So I would just encourage everyone to wait for those appointments, divine appointments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody crosses your path and you think, hmm, you know, maybe I should smile at them mm -hmm. or say something kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might make their whole day. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. that's true. So, yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's about it. Yeah. But you know, I, one thing that Kathy does is, um, how many children are you supporting? Um, Compassion? 15. 15. Mm -hmm. She doesn't just send them money, she writes to every single mm -hmm. one of them and visits them often. We visited a lot of your kids that you support I have over the years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because there's so much you can do just in a letter as well as mm -hmm. sending money. And mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of time. That's one of the and things I really know. miss is the traveling, being able to travel to see the kids. Mm -hmm. And the letters have kind of fallen down too because right now letters aren't a, aren't a priority. Right. Getting enough to eat mm -hmm. and keeping up with school. Yeah. And but then I'm looking forward to when my letters start coming in again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. It's such a good day. Reminder of always being generous. Time. That's really good. Amen. That scripture is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So to release my brother, you've done that for me. Yeah, I remember the very first time when I saw uh, James Robinson preach, he also added that scripture in there. And, uh, well, he just went on and on and on about the least of these, my brethren, the least of these, my brethren. All the people that we pass by constantly are the least of these, my yeah. brethren. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it really can bring some major conviction. You know? And, you know, when it comes to these things, one of the things that's important, um, because of the fact of what Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. I mean, when you think about uh, in, in the countries that she uh, mentioned, when we would go down there um, to those places. It was the, I mean, the governments are horrible. Yeah. And the people are suffering because of the, the governments. Yeah. But here in the United States, it's different. But for us, the key is obedience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, because you can go down it's a funny thing. For the most part, I live a cashless life because she doesn't give me any money. <laughs> and I don't blame her. I don't blame her, but it's just one of those things. Um, but when I was a contractor, I used to get paid first, and then I'd skim some off the top, and she wouldn't know, and I'd always have cash. Um, and when we would drive down the hill and get gas, I was just shocked at how many people would hit you up for money. And... Uh, and, and we've always, we've always, we don't have uh, a lot of money, but we've had more than them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just feel it's like when you go to a restaurant, it's the, such a wonderful form uh, and the easy and simple form and a, and a great form to bless somebody, give them a 50% tip. Or if it, you get a cup of coffee, give them 50 bucks, something like that. It doesn't have to be that. I'm just saying, because when you do that, it impacts somebody. And it only costs 20 bucks or 50, but it literally, <laughs> someone goes, wow, well, 10 bucks or five bucks to a homeless person um, goes a long way. So I was getting hit up so much that I, I just quit going down the hill. No, that's not. <laughs> so I thought to myself, you know, it's not, it reminded me of when we, we were in India. And, and you weren't with me when I was on this, uh, on this, this one, that one bridge. I don't know where you were. I was there. You were, you were there too? It I seems to me, you must have been walking ahead of me though. I was there. No, you were there on the bridge with me. Yes. Okay. 
I don't remember seeing you there. You were so enthusiastic. Yeah. Uh, all the people along the street. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 none of the street, but the ones on the bridge. And the sidewalks and everywhere yeah. we went. We were always together, so yeah. Okay, never mind. You don't leave me behind. Kind of thing. No, I, I didn't think I would, <laughs> but I don't remember you being there. Anyways, there was just there was just so much, and then I, I, I ran out of money. Well, so, for so I thought, well, I got to make this a little more practical. So I thought if I'm gonna give them money, they're gonna, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy time with their ear, and I'm gonna to talk to them. And then I thought even something better, that if I'm gonna do this here in the United States, not over there, um, here, I thought I'm gonna to listen to people. So the very first ones we were, I, I, I had run into, the kids went into, we were at uh, getting a, a, like a Chipotle or something like that. And this uh, uh, couple came up to me and just started giving me their story about they didn't have any money and yada yada yada. And I said, "Listen, I said I'm gonna I'm gonna eat because they just came here. So, I, but I, I'm gonna be right back in in one minute. I'm gonna get my food and I'm gonna eat, but I want to listen to your story. So here I am eating while I'm listening to their story. But when I was done, I thought." This was really awesome. I had an opportunity to share with them. I gave them enough money to give whatever they needed, it was a hotel or, or whatever it was. And everybody went away happy because we just stopped and spent just a little bit of time listening, listening. So after that, people are so willing to talk to you. And you know, I don't judge their situation. All I know is this one thing, nobody really wants to be homeless. And most people that are, somehow or another, have lost their family. Yeah, that's yeah. They don't have a family. Mm -hmm. And family is what the enemy is trying to tear apart. And family is the key to so many of these things. Yeah. So, so many good lessons uh, from that particular, the least of these, my brethren. Mm -hmm. The moral to the story for us in America, be obedient to God. You can easily give all your money today. Just watch TBM once, you know, and it is, it, it's really easy. I remember my grandmother who <laughs> is so funny because grandma and grandpa were rich. And so grandpa always would buy a few Mercedes at a time and give them to the family and whatever. And to the pastor, always bought the pastor a new Mercedes. Oh my goodness. I still haven't run into that guy yet, <laughs> but maybe someday it will. And not that I care. But it was kind of fun. Um, but I remember after, now grand, Grandpa died, and Grandma's just kind of, she's watching TBN. She goes, we should, and she just said, we should have, we shouldn't have ever had those Mercedes. We should have given all the, all of the, the money to the poor. And they could have given all the money to the poor, then they would have had no money, right? The point is, you can give it all away. That's fine if God tells you to do it. Mm -hmm. But what you want is to be obedient. And, and when you do that, you bring maximum glory to God, and you're going to be maximizing whatever this divine appointment is. And so often we're even ministering where we shouldn't be ministering. Mm -hmm. Just be able to, so, so keep it simple. Uh, okay, understand? does everybody understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. Because when we were sitting in church one time, and I felt like God spoke to me, we were at the Christian Center, and, and said, and I had just gotten paid, so I had $700 in my pocket, and, which was unusual. And, and God said to give 500 of it to this uh, lady sitting over so-and-so. And I said to Michelle, I said, Michelle, I said, I believe God just told me to give uh, the money I have to that person over there. And she says, I said, do you think that's the right thing to do? And she says, it's always right to give. Mm -hmm. See how simple that was? I'm trying to be obedient. And even though it was going to take everything that we had at the moment, but it is always right to, to give. It's always right to be generous. Yep. To be, it goes with kindness mm -hmm. and all the fruit of the Spirit. You get, there, there is no, there's no real stoplights there. But there is going to be maximizing the correct time. You don't have to overextend yourself. God will take, if you're supposed to be doing something, God will provide. 
providing your listening mm -hmm. and providing your obeying. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Anyways, that particular scripture has always been a biggie uh, for me because of when he said that it made me the least of these my brethren. It wasn't about the in church and the you got more money than that person over there or whatever. No, it, it's showing kindness and generosity and goodness to everyone. And we tend to uh, to be selective at people that are homeless. Well, and the guy goes out and buys more booze. You know, I don't, I still, we haven't walked in their moccasins, you know. I just, I would just pray for them. They smell like booze. They're, they're on drugs. That, you know, God would get a hold of them. God would get a hold of them. You, and you have an opportunity to pray. I can't tell you how many of these guys all of a sudden would just start crying and want to kiss me. I mean, it was just hysterical after a while. But you you show a little kindness. It goes a long, long way. Long, long ways. Amen. And the Lord said, Good stuff. The poor you'll always have with you. So there's always going to be poor with you. Yeah. And we cannot possibly meet the needs of all the poor in the world, but we can sure impact some. Like I said, just be obedient. I, I, I guarantee it'll get taken care of. Mm -hmm. and, the, and it's poor in spirit. It's poor mm -hmm. in, you know, job, not just money. Mm -hmm. But what poor do... But what do we say about that particular scripture? The poor, Jesus says, the poor will always be with you, but. Mm -hmm. But me, he was referring to him. He was so how long I be with you? His presence mm -hmm. with their presence. Mm -hmm. In other words, value his presence That's good. more so than true. you value ministry or doing everything. Because you could give your life, but if you have not love, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you don't love the Lord, it's he was nothing. comparing. I think, I think it also says in Proverbs, um, you give to the poor, you're loaning to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's basically the same yeah. thing for the, the, right. the what scripture in Matthew came from. But like you said, too, we have to value the Lord first and He'll direct our steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things about um, the poor is it's not always, um, well, oftentimes people are poor money wise, but they're also poor spiritually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, emotionally. And so it's not just always writing a check. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're in love. Yeah. We don't have anything to love anymore. Mm -hmm. No family and no. Yeah. And I tell you, when we would. Uh, Abuse. We, <laughs> when we took, uh, did mission trips down to Guatemala. And uh, so we, so, so for, a, for a preacher, it's a blast because you're, you're preaching at least twice a day, every day for mm -hmm. two weeks straight. And it's wherever you go, you preach. So in restaurants, or it didn't matter in the parks, everywhere you go, it's just, it's just uh, so much fun. But people were so hungry for the Lord, they couldn't speak English at all. But they would just flock just to hear someone reading out of the Bible, not even in their language, just to pick up and get a track that was in their language. I mean, the hunger. There are hungry people for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they, they will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. they, they will be filled. All right, well, that was awesome. Kathy, thank you so much uh, for that. And uh, any other insights that someone wants to share before we go on? We're good? Okay, who wants to uh, do their 10 minutes next week? Raise your hand. Um, I will. Is that okay? That's so awesome. Would you run this week? Yeah. Yeah, I've got If not, then you'll have to Dutch. zoom in. Okay, yeah. I've got something. I'll do the Dutch thing. But... Okay. Yeah. All right. And now, people, don't be shy. I have, quite frankly, I've never seen Kathy do anything like that before, and she did a marvelous job. Okay. So you can do it too. Be mm -hmm. encouraged, okay? All right. So last week, does anyone remember what we talked about? I always remember it because I always go back and listen to what I said. Yeah, so I make sure, okay, in case I need to say the same thing over and over again. Make quick to sure. believe, that was it. Huh? Being quick to believe. Nah, that's, that wasn't last week. Oh, how about on Thursday night? Anybody watch uh, Teresa last week on Thursday night and the yeah. week before was Tabitha? Listen. These guys smoke me as far as preaching and teaching. 
They are so good. We have such a wealth yeah. here in our church. So if you haven't seen them, go back and listen to them. Don't, I don't recommend Word Warriors. <laughs> She's whispering to me. She's joking. It says quick to obey in my note. Quick to obey. Mine says be quick to believe, to forgive, to love, to use. Yes. All right, you guys win. Um, I'm no, teaching the word, tomorrow night, too. Yeah, and, mom, and mom's teaching tomorrow night. Oh, good. No, the word for is, is awesome. It's just at a challenging time for everybody to listen to. But in listening to, to them, I have never in my life witnessed such a outpouring of the Word of God in such a fast and condensed amount of time. And it just goes, it goes back and forth and back and forth. I mean, it is, it's amazing. So, but if you have a day to spend every Monday, it would be, it would, yeah, that's it. It's very condensed. 10.30. So it's very condensed. Yeah. It is condensed. We could go all day. Yeah. But we have it on Zoom too. What do you mean it's condensed? It has nothing to do with it's condensed. It's compact. There's so much in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Here I am at the power of words. Now, last week we finished with, uh, I believe it was 1 Peter 3 8 through 10. Um, and we're not going in order. Tabitha has nine in my order. That was all mixed up. I had number six. Now, I want us to read uh, number two, which is Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, <laughs> that is kind of a powerful section of scripture because it's, uh, it's coming off of 27, 28 with the blessings and the curses, uh, adding also to the blessings and the curses right before it. But um, there's so much here that... There's one, we get to, I think, two scriptures uh, in regards to the word, but the rest of it is so powerful that uh, we need to go through it. And then I wanted to read one scripture in Timothy, chapter in Timothy, 1 Timothy, and that led me to 2 Timothy, pretty much both books that we're going to try to go through tonight. <laughs> All right, verse 11. What time is it? You've got eight minutes. Talk fast. Get to the word. You say 10. We're going to be 30. Verse 11. Now, what I am commanding you to do is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. The word of God, in the word of God, we are to obey. And it's so funny, this is a New International Version, but it's not like a New English or a Message Version. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult. This isn't, mm -hmm. this isn't tough. Amen. That's it's right. good for you. Right. Yep. It, it may, may, may rub against your flesh a little bit, but it is, it is not a tough thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Okay, now, that, uh, I'm, I'm, now what I'm commanding you to do is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Anytime God says obey, number one, he's going to give you the answer. He's going to give you the ability if he tells you to do something, but he's going to put it within your reach. You draw near to him. He draws near to you. You reach. It's going to be there. Amen. But but you think about it. I said something last week. I said that I don't think, and I didn't get to finish it, which is really funny. So must it, some of you if, you, if you were paying attention, were going, whatever happened to that thing John said in the very beginning that he was going to say, because he didn't say it. Nobody remembered but me. And that was that what I'm going to say might be beyond your stretching. You might not be able to stretch out far enough and really grab a hold of it and bring it in. And sometimes that's what we have to do with the Lord. We got to stretch a little bit. He wants us to stretch out. He wants us to reach out. He wants us hunger, hungry and thirsting for his righteousness. Verse 12. It is not up in heaven. I mean, he's being sarcastic and funny right now. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's not up in heaven. You can have it right now. It's for right now. It's not in the sweet by and by. Mm -hmm. Who will ascend into heaven to go get it? Who's going to go get it for us? Mm. 
Jesus. No, it's all been provided for us. It's a done deal. It's over. God did it all. It's done. Who will ascend and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? Nor is it to be beyond the sea. Oh, man, he just keeps going here and keep going. And it's got to be so far away you can't get to it. No, no, no. Verse 14. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. Mm, in your in your mouth and in your heart. All right, so let's keep reading here. Verse 15. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. So if God sets life and prosperity in front of you and says also that he, he uh, puts death and destruction, the destruction, and then he says, now choose one or the other. Yep. Does that mean that you can have life and prosperity? Yep. Sure. Sure does. And you can have death and destruction, yep. one or the yes, other, sir. huh? Right. But what, what do, why do people get so hung up on this prosperity thing? Because they're jealous. Mm -hmm. but, but jealous of, of what? That God wants us to be blessed or because some people are actually blessed? Financially, I, th yeah. I think it's um, judgment. They like judgment. to judge other people. Mm -hmm. People like to judge other people if they have more than them or more than this person, or if they're too much into prosperity or too much into that. They like to just too much faith, too much of the word. Too much this, you're too spiritual. Well, I don't know. It's just a judgment. I don't know how you could do, do that, Kevin. Plus, it doesn't fit with the works mentality. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. There's no wow. geared towards. Okay. Do stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's, that's a, and it, and it kind of has nothing to do with mercy and grace, huh? The grace goes out the window. A life without prosperity is a life without responsibility. So a life without, without responsibility. You don't have to be responsible for your actions. Mm. That was my life at one point in time. I was 19 years old. I had life made in the shade. I'm working two days a week, had a van. Surfed every day, went to school a couple days. It was wonderful. And I said to myself, I will never take on responsibility because I recognized responsibility was the death of all things good. That lasted until I met Michelle. <laughs> and I saw the whole other side of this wonderful responsibility and working and all this kind of fun. Somebody else had a hand up. Where'd it go? I have a, a comment in regards to where we get, where did we get this prosperity thing and the difficulties with it. When you look at how long it took uh, for the Protestant Reformation to happen, that's a lot of centuries of guilt and buying absolution and pain and feeling like so poor, poor. And they really didn't want the poor to do too well. Um, well, the corruption of it just fell within. It's true. So you have a, a lot it. of history there. Mm -hmm. And then where it comes now is where people think that they that that works gets them to heaven. Yeah. So they figure, okay, well, that prosperity thing combined with that perhaps is confusing to them when they're really not reading the word in the first place, right. just like the Catholics did that we did right. in the beginning to know what the heck was said about anything. No, <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah, but, 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 but isn't, isn't that just the simplest and most wonderful answer? That's so good. You know, just read the Bible. Or what does the Bible say about it? Right. What is the Bible? Because we, we follow the Bible, right? We follow the Bible. What does the Bible say? Uh, Abby, <laughs> share what, what you shared at Word Warriors that time about when you're 13 or when you all of a sudden realize you, you share, know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Didn't I already share it here? Or would you like me to oh, yeah. share it again? Share it again. I don't think you did. did. Um, like first time. It was, uh, which verse is it? Verse Matthew, Matthew yes. or Mark? End of Mark. It's the verse in the end of Mark, Mark that's end of Mark. seen. And these yeah. things Besides will follow. Besides the people that believe. Uh-huh. And it, I was reading it and it's crazy stuff. It's like, They'll grab snakes and right. not be killed and drink poisonous things and not be hurt. And it was liter it's literally in the context of, oh, this is how you can tell they're a Christian. And 
I just thought, why don't I see that? Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And from that point, then what happened in your life? Um, I went looking for why and why don't those things happen in my life? And I, I guess I just started looking for God more. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I didn't know what I could be doing wrong, but I wanted to do it right. You want to have those signs following like we're supposed to, like, oh, this is so good. And it, caught, it brought you on a journey. Yeah. A journey to get closer mm -hmm. to the Lord and be filled with spirit. And what you call There's the times I want to get a gun and shoot my cuckoo clock. <laughs> <laughs> I warned you. This is, this, is, this is one of those times. Yeah. I apologize to you out there. You can leave, but I'm going to talk for a few more minutes. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I just, all this why people would do that, I go back to why Cain was so angry and why his face was downcast. You know, do what is right, and you'll be accepted. And but not to do what is right, the sin is crouching at your door, and it's because you must overcome it. So when people's angers, you know, when they're jealous and angers, you know, that, certain, that sin is lurking at your door. You know, do what's right, and you'll be accepted. Amen. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, it's just so simple. So simple. Yeah, so simple that, and, and that's what brought me to you. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and like when you mentioned, basically, in the, the dark areas and the Spanish Inquisition and those kinds, kinds of times it's in history, Europe yeah. and England, but here. when you think about here in the United States, that with Jonathan Edwards, who was absolutely brilliant and a scholar, but his best piece of work is Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. That's how America was founded. Mm -hmm. With the, and I mean, but they started out with that kind of preaching, and they would end up with mercy and grace, but sometimes they would never get past Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Yeah. And hence, that's where we have Azusa yeah. Streets, and then we have the Jesus right. Movement, and, and we have. Mercy. Uh, all these these things yes. that are that where the Holy Spirit is uh, is taking control and pointing back to some of the things that we have lost. Okay, let me just keep going real quick here. So I want I would like to get to the scripture that refers to uh, mm -hmm. the word that, uh, that we're talking about power and work. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience uh, to Him, and to keep so. So the, the word tells us to uh, walk with the Lord. So if we're going to walk with the Lord, what they're saying is that we're going to be obedient to what he said because we're going to be in agreement with him. He's not going to be in agreement with us. We're, we can walk with him. Just like it says in Amos, how, do, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? It's not just walking, but it's walking as friends and communing with one another. Uh, you will live in... Okay, so... Uh, for I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase. So when you're doing things God's way, you're going to live, mm -hmm. which means you're going to really experience what life is all about. Otherwise, and, and that would be the fullness, too, of not just the spiritual side, but also the, all the senses, you know, these senses that we have are wonderful, but the senses are what usually gets us, gets us in trouble. But when the senses are completely submitted to the, to the, the Holy Spirit of God, they're marvelous. Your, your emotions are, are wonderful. Your, your mind operates and functions great, and you have a handle on things, and you understand, and, and God brings clarity uh, to, to troubling uh, things. You have wisdom that's not the wisdom of this world, but uh, from God. But so we're going to be able to have life, real life, not just go through, you know, it's just, and, and don't get me wrong, I've, I've had these thoughts, man, I just want to get through today. I mean, what a horrible thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, particularly when you get older, you only get so many of these Today's to, to go through you you don't want to waste any of them mm -hmm. you don't you want to make sure that you're doing exactly what God's called you to do and be obedient to him and to and then you will live but in that living you will increase in other words you will have good fruit and it go I go back to Matthew Mark and Luke parable of the sower 
which we all are. We're one of four fields. Three fields do not. They heard the word. They grabbed a hold of it. They rejoiced. They did all sorts of things. But three of the fields did not produce the kind of fruit that God wanted. Only one field did. So even in the midst of us desiring to pursue God, so many of us just don't get the right handle on life. Things choke it out. And, choke yeah, it and, and we miss it. And most of the time it's just junk. Verse 17. But if your heart turns away and you are not open. Oh, let me go back and finish that. Um, and you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. And so for us in the land that we are entering to possess is this future of ours. Mm -hmm. It could be this chapter of, uh, of our life or it could be this next chapter. Now I'm going to skip down to verse 19 and I'll quit. This day I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. So now God is making it absolutely abundantly clear that Amen. you have a choice. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said it before you. Yeah. It is your choice. It has nothing to do with God's sovereignty and that it's all him. No, you, you make the choice. He's laid it out mm -hmm. and he set it before you. You can have a marvelous life in the midst of it. Well, you and now people even they don't even like those words. Well, you can't guarantee anybody a marvelous life. You're missing the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a life that's fulfilled or that is fulfilling God's purpose is a marvelous yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you will have that satisfaction inside and you will say to people when people say, how's it going? I'm in a good place. So many people can't say that. But I'm in a good place. I'm right where God wants me to be. Amen. We don't go by feelings. We go by faith. But it feels good. And it's nice and fun. And I like it. I like to feel good. Now, choose life. So that you and your children may live. Oh, boy, they bring in the children on this one. Mm -hmm. And that you may love the Lord, your God. You see, you know, when you love life, you love the Lord. Yep. Mm -hmm. When things are going well, you really appreciate God. I mean, you really do. You sit and you look back and you go, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I got saved. I'm so glad I changed my ways. I so, I'm so glad I worked on lining my life out. I can't even imagine <laughs> what I would have what would have happened to me on, the, on the, the direction I was going? And that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice. So now we're going to love it and we're going to listen. Amen. I'm going to take some time, come to Bible study, and I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to God. He's going to speak to me. He's going to speak to me and I'm going to listen. And then I'm going to be obedient and then I'm going to do it. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. Amen. That goes back to alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. Hold on just a little bit tighter. Hold on, hold on. When you got a good thing, hold on. Don't let go. I'm telling you. The, for the Lord is your life. That kind of sums it up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I can say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for John, there is no life outside of serving the Lord. Amen. That's right. You know, that's, he, that's, that's the end of the road for me. And don't have to ever worry about backsliding or doing anything like that. Been there and done that. This is, this is the life for me. For the Lord is your life. Thank you, Lord. You are my life. And he will give you many years in the land. He swore to give you part. Now, I believe that that's just promised land living. He's going to give you many years in promised land living, which is being obedient and, and walking in the blessings of God that he has for you because we obey his word we seek him out and we commune and have fellowship with him. And that makes this kind of fellowship all possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Goodbye. Amen. See you next week, everybody. Hallelujah. Any questions?